Why make Avengers 5 and 6 if, if it's going to be the big screen equivalent of what Secret Invasion was on TV? Like, that's kind of what it feels like. It's like if you're you going to make that. Secret Wars kind of this like throwaway ending to a saga that you feel like you have to finish because you came this far. What a shame. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo. And joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we talk about things and it seems as if people are taking more notice to the logic that we talk about here on the nerd gen report which is basically how do we get to where we were which is excitement and anticipation for the next thing the story all the fan theories now it's just there's no certainty there there is a lot of confusion there's a lot of um, we don't know what to do next. And we spoke about it last time that they need something different and they seem to possibly be pivoting over to the mutants, Brian. And we keep on calling the mutants, which I hope we get a different name. But Brian, what are the what's the news regarding the mutants, the mutants? Because for a while, Brian, we've been talking about them introducing the mutants and how they're going to do it. And we also said it's going to be a while. What has changed lately, Brian? Well, I think it's still going to be a while, but um, yeah, I think the the big question to me, the big elephant in the room question to me is what actually is going to happen with Avengers 5 and 6? It, it, the story makes clear that after Secret Wars, the entire Avengers verse is being benched, basically, for the foreseeable future. And they're going to pivot in almost entirely to um, mutant stories as a way to kind of, that's going to be Marvel content on big screen and probably on the small screen too. And you figure also, if you think about the timing of that, you know, we're getting one more Tom Holland Spider-Man, but that's probably going to be out of the way by then too. So like, you know, who knows that probably will be the last one that he does. So it's like you, your deck is clear really on, on both sides. So to me, there's two main questions, right? And the first, like I said, is what, so Avengers five and six feels very lame duck to me. And we just saw what lame duck looks like with the DC EU. <clears throat> Nobody showed up. Nobody cared. Now, I, I don't think there was a great movie in, in any of the last vintage that they put out, but the audience buried those films because yeah. in part because they knew this was it. I keep going back to like, why make Avengers 5 and 6 if if it's going to be the big screen equivalent of what Secret Invasion was on TV? Like, that's kind of what it feels like. It's like if you're you going to make that. Secret Wars kind of this like throwaway ending to a saga that you feel like you have to finish because you came this far. What a shame. Yeah. Like, what a shame if that's what we get as the wrap to one of the great comic storylines that they've done. Why not? Just shelve it now. Like, if you're going to bench mm. them after, bench them now. You bench who? Like, you, you look at your, you look at your lineup. You get like some of your, some of your actors want out. The audience isn't connecting with some of the other ones. There's, there's nobody here. There's nobody indispensable. And you, obviously your big bad, you know, you just fired. So what exactly are you protecting other than we put this up on the screen so we have to finish this saga because it's interconnected. I would say you do not. Yeah. You're going to make the pivot, which it sounds like they've committed to. Just make it. Make it now. Yeah. But there's those there's people out there, Brian, that are talking about they want to see this Kang thing through. I say, listen, we can't get into... If you ask me, if I'm running studio, we can't get into this... Release the Snyder Cut thing again, or you know what I'm saying? Uh, capitulating to the to 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 the fans and, and what they say, we can't go down that route to try to make something that people are not connecting with, or and then continuing something and forcing ourselves to create. I don't know, Brian. It's just a. <laughs> 
difficult situation. Bob Iger just, we just did a show about this, just went on a rant about not forcing sequels if they didn't have the story and they didn't have the characters ready to go. How is this not the quintessential example of what yeah. he's talking about? Yeah. This is the exact same thing. When they greenlit this movie, they were sitting in the room being like, the only question is whether we are going to break Endgame's box office record. That was what they thought. We're yeah. sitting here talking about, like, can they scratch and claw their way with inside of a billion dollars? A third of what that movie made. Your question, Bob Iger, has been answered. <laughs> if you're having that conversation, don't make the movie. Yeah. And if you already want to make the pivot, which we're totally in support of, commit the dollars in that direction. Yeah. And by the way, to if Iger is going to be about entertainment over messaging... It's called the X Men. I'm yeah. sorry. It matters. It does matter. And if they go that route without going the right route with the name, the name, Brian, I would say Brian is over. I think it would be a, like I said, I think it would be a lightning rod. For additional criticism about Disney, if they say we're creating the mutant universe and all of that X insignia that we're used to for all these years is gone and replaced by an M, people are going to have a field day with that. <laughs> I mean, how do you get rid of X Men? Are you kidding me? You know how much money is in that right there? Right, but it's like if you call them the mutants and then you put the X symbol because of you say, well, Xavier, and X. <laughs> Come on, man. That's nobody's going to go for that. That makes it look even worse. Oh, man. So I'm just saying that this will be a real test immediately of what Iger was ranting about, like if they're going to go on that route. But they clearly seem to be ready to do it. It's just a question of, you know, what happens with Avengers 5 and 6 in the meantime. And I think that you know, they took the title off of Kang Dynasty, which we had talked about. So it does feel like it is very much up in the air. I don't, I don't know that they totally know whether they're going to continue a Kang storyline or whether they're going to pivot to Doom or pivot to the Beyond or do something. I, I don't think they've totally settled on it yet. I mean, Walden just took over the writing for Avengers 5. So he's starting <clears> over. <throat> well, the Beyond would be the way out. The Beyond would be the way out, Brian, because you don't have to deal with it, Ken. I think the way Loki wrapped up, I, we've said it in the past, just wrap that nicely for us. Um, if they go the Beyond the route, perfect. We start brand new. We go with the mutants. Captain America and all these guys already exist. We don't, because X-Men, They, if you watch the X-Men, these dudes got some serious missions, yo. These missions is crazy. Yeah. So you know Captain America and, and the governments don't know a lot about what's going on in the background because it's a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah. Weird stuff. So I can understand those guys not being around. And if they are, just just be clever about it. Just be, you know, we don't have to be like, where's this guy? We, come on, man. Well, again, the beauty of the the beauty of the X-Men and, and like the animated show and all that sort of stuff is like the stakes were not always the world is going to end, <laughs> right? A lot of the best stories and a lot of things that were most interesting were very grounded, like very localized missions. And like, yeah, the second, see the problem is like the second you make it a planetary defense mission, then yeah, then the question of where is the Avengers comes up. If you're talking about something you're dealing with, like in your backyard, something about like mutant registration and things like, like you don't, you don't need the Avengers for that. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, believable yeah. that they wouldn't necessarily participate in, in, in a story about that. We've had conversations, Brian, on how, uh, uh, Brian, on how to go about um, um, introducing the mutants. They've already introduced the mutants. That's kind of a problem, by the way. That's something they're going to have. They might they might be retconning that. I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, because they, you know, Miss Marvel being a mutant. Like, we've, we've had a few, like, drops of the music as a way to signal, like, here's our mutant here and here's our mutant there. It, it is disgusting nothing that they can't, to hear that they music. can't write around. Like nothing they couldn't, you know, revisit and revise. But, you know, I, I, they clearly, Feige had a connectivity design from the multiverse mm -hmm. saga into mutants. 
And now the multiverse saga is kind of going down in flames. Like one wonders in the writer's room, whether they might try to separate and make <clears throat> that backstory a little bit different than what they originally intended. Um, I said something just now. I said that when, when you, when I, when I hear the theme music, Brian, I go in, I, I, in my, my, in my mind, I'm going crazy. Cause it's similar to showing the Aquaman suit before the movie comes out. It's like, don't you want that moment? It's like, yo, y'all did it. Y'all were able to hold yourselves for Avengers Assemble until the last moment. And you didn't you put can't... it in the trailer. And you didn't huh? put it in the you did not put it in the trailer before the movie came out. And now you're doing you you oh my goodness yo it sounds horrible when i hear it now in that context when you it's like dude if you're gonna do something do it don't do it so obvious well the other thing too is like so that music belongs with x-men 97 which is the true sequel to the animated series but like now that you've dropped it into the cinematic universe like and we get the cinematic x-men i don't want to hear that theme music that's not their theme all music. the time yo. it's not their music that's a music from a specific era of X-Men animated stories. Like, I don't want to hear it with the new live action version. New music, new theme for that. It's like, this was part of the reason why, like, Brian Singer's Superman Returns. It's like he was held hostage by the Donner version in part because he insisted on using the John Williams theme exactly over again. I, I much preferred in Man of Steel that they at least wrote something different. Yeah. Like, this is our Superman theme. Like, yeah. But I mean, we'll have more conversations as we get more um, insight as to what their plans are with the the mutants. But right now, we got to figure out what the what's what's gonna what's it gonna be. Multiverse saga. We're gonna end, we're gonna cap this off. What are we what are we doing here? Right now, there, there's just so many possibilities. Not so many because there's a there there are few being spoken of. Just we have the beyond the, we have the recast of the Kang. Now we're going, well, what were you going to say? I was going to say like, just, just make the end of the multiverse saga Loki at the end of time, preserving free will. I'm I good. agree I'm with you, good Brian. With it. I'm good with it. I agree with you. Don't go through the headaches of trying to recast if you're thinking that way. Don't go through the headaches of getting another writer to finish this off. Be done with it. Why? Cause you can. Forget about what the fans are saying, yo. They're gonna come out. Just give us something good, but don't, 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 don't succumb to the pressures of fans who, you know, who, who like freaking Aquaman too. <laughs> Well, like, like, you know what I'm saying? This idea that they put stuff up on stage and said they were going to do it, therefore they have to, is is also hypocritical. It's like, remember back in the day, like they put up Inhumans as a movie, and look what, like, look what Inhumans turned into, and like nobody says a word about that now. It's like we'd have been better off had they not done anything at all. And it's like you can change your plan. It's okay. It's okay. It happens all the time, you know. Yeah, all the time, every day. Didn't get that raise? Well, <laughs> Didn't get that box office? Well, <laughs> Loki's right there, yo. Loki. There's nobody that's gonna fight you on this, really. The way that ended, Brian, I did not think about King. All I'm thinking about is when is Loki gonna see his brother again? Yeah, that's exactly. what I want to see. Exactly. That's what I want to see. Forget King, yo. I don't care about Kang, but yo, if you if... it's ego though, right? I mean, if if they if they can if they insist on finishing this, it's ego. I mean, it's human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the idea that like it's, a, just, it's admitting yeah. failure, and yeah. and they don't want to be looked at doing something that they started, which they were gung ho about it, Brian. They put all their chips into majors, and it didn't pan out. Yeah, you don't. There's nothing really to save here, man. And I, I, you know, and actually, I give. We'll see, but I do give a little bit of credit to DC for doing that, because there's there are other people who would have felt the pressure to do a Black Adam two just because, who would have felt the pressure to continue on with some of the actors they had just because, and I 
give them a little bit of credit that they planted a flag, drew a line, and said, no, all of you are out. It's yeah. a clean slate. That's not the easiest thing to do. But, Brian, that's also because the, a new regime came in and said, it's over. The current regime at the MCU was still perhaps, I think, the same. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. You know, and, and, and they're the ones still making these decisions. And these are the guys, a new regime, a new, hey, just send over, just, come on, man, just send an email. And we there. Brian are there with bells on. <laughs> <laughs> and we can just have I, all I care is to sit down and have a conversation if we could, yo. I'll be happy with a half hour conversation with Kevin Feige. We know I, you can make a sign NDA. I don't care as long as I did it. I say I can say I did it. Can I say I did it? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wish I was there to help. I'm just there to lend a helping hand. That's what I want to do. But um, Brian. Before we sign off, we just want to say thank you to everyone who's uh, watched the show. Um, and this year has been a good year, Brian, for our show. We've gotten a lot of uh, views, uh, uh, controversial stuff. I, I, I would, I would think, but it's not really controversial if you listen to the logic, yo. Because some of these things you know, shouldn't be the way they are. And some people are just pushing agendas to, to do certain things that don't really make sense. But this year has been a good year and for us, Brian, because we, we honestly just tell our perspective, our opinions, because we don't want this superhero genre to die, not in our lifetime. You know, we want it to continue. And we're just sort of, I guess we just sort of point out um, the things that are obvious, obviously wrong to us, I guess. Yeah, no, I mean, this, this show is a lot of fun to do and, and uh, it's fun when, you know, folks seem to respond to things or have comments or, you know, react to, to, to what we're saying. And I think like the way I think about it and the way I think you think about it is, you know, there's a lot of news out there and it'd be easy to just quote what's been said, accept everything at face value and call it a day. And that's not really a good show. Like, so part of what we're trying to do, and we're not always right, is... We're trying more, to read. For the most part, we are. We're right? trying to read the TV. We're trying to see, like, this is the comment that was officially made. Does that make sense? If it yeah. doesn't make sense, what do we think they're really saying? What do we really think is about to happen? Um, what are the pitfalls of what they're trying to do here? What are the upside? What are we excited about? There's been things that we've gotten so excited about that have turned out to be huge disappointments. There's been things that we've just talked about the end of Loki. I will always wear egg on my face for you. Know, I'm done with that character. And that's been the greatest gift of the last couple of years from Marvel. It's been everything that Tom Hiddleston has done with Loki. Like that's part yeah. of the fun, yeah. um, you know. And so I hope people people enjoy that. But I think the other thing that the two of us try to do is we try to see a lot. You know, we try to see a lot in this genre, see a lot that's not in this genre. Because I look at it now because of this show. When I watch other things, I'm always reverting back to this genre. I'm looking at like, oh, that's they're doing stuff that like would work over here or like that actor could really do this part like yeah, you know, you're talking about rich and his back like the perfect example alan rich and his batman like you see somebody and you're like i can imagine them being this character that's just fun it's fun to have that lens yeah, yeah. over everything that i consume in entertainment and so yeah i hope people enjoy what we've what we've had to say and we'll keep trying to do more of it and you know bring you know improve i think pablo does an amazing job with the engineering and the production and he's always tweaking thank you, the design thank you, thank you. and and kind of like what the formats. I have nothing to do with that. He does all of that. So uh, Brian I think just Brian just picks up the phone call. That's what I need Brian That's to do is just pick up the phone call <laughs> and record. That's it. <laughs> and I'll do everything else. But um, this year I uh, tw for 2024, I'm really am trying to do um other things uh for the channel, um and for other things, Brian. I'll discuss this with you. Uh, um offline but there are some things for 2024 that i want the channel to start uh doing um um and i'll keep you informed about that but uh, we certainly love doing the show every time brian that i say oh my god and then i do the show and then i listen to the show i'm like this is why i do the show because what we're talking about other people are saying craziness just because and and and, and it's not um uh, it's not me bashing them. It's no. just sometimes it doesn't make sense. We're what not people haters. Are saying. That's the thing is, like, I think if you listen to even stuff that we're highly critical of, 
Uh, and the MCU is a great example. I mean, we have plenty of shows a couple of years ago where we're like, the MCU could do no wrong. There's only us <laughs> here, right? But like, when, when you give us garbage, we will have the integrity to call it garbage and call you exactly. to task for doing it. And so I think that's exactly. part of it. It's like, we're not, we're not here to hate on anybody. Uh, we hope that everything is great. Um, but we're also, we also care. And sometimes I feel like we care more about the material than the people who make what we see. And that's, that's unfortunate. absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Lately. Lately. Um, a couple of sh- uh, mentions. A um, couple of mentions. Uh, Blue-Eyed Samurai, please watch that. Brian, yeah, uh, what, how many episodes are you I'm in? Three episodes deep. It's very, okay. very well done. Brian, there's other stuff. Ooh, we got to talk about it once, once, once you're done. But Blue-Eyed Samurai... Um, Anything else this year, Brian, that surprised you? I think I was surprised by how quickly Marvel unraveled. I think even in my, I think that's one of the, like even, I, I, I knew the slope would be slippery. I didn't know how slippery it would turn out to be. Um, so I think the unraveling of Marvel to me at the speed at which it's happened and, and how we've arrived at where we are now has been impressively bad. Um, yeah, because when we talked about Quantum Mania, we were excited for that. We thought this was going to blow everybody's mind. I mean, and, and it did 104 million U.S. opening weekend. An Ant Man movie opened to 104 million U.S. in opening weekend and didn't make money. Like that's, that's crazy. How, it was weeks. Like it was a matter of that opening weekend to the final then, box office of that movie felt like the moment. It felt like Waterloo happened. Like it it haven't recovered since. And like, and Guardians 3 was kind of like its own thing because it was from the past. And it showed you that people were still had that allegiance to old Marvel. Good stuff. Yeah, old Marvel, which was good. Good stuff. Yes. Talk about not hating. They weren't hating on Marvel universally. They saw something from a period of Marvel they liked and they still showed up. But man, they left in droves. And I do, I do think like, for the rest of the genre, I'm not surprised. Because when you look at the quality of what was oh, yeah, put yeah, out, yeah. you can't look me in the eye and tell me this was a year of anything that approached classics. Guardian 3, Guardians 3 is the only thing that you're like, this is excellent. It's like in the top tier of what we've seen. Everything yeah. else was a massive disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. Except well, I should yeah. say a big screen. Loki season two was not, but like. Oh everything, yeah, 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 everything yeah, 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 yeah. Everything There's, big screen. There was, you know, you got the little sprinkles of stuff that was yeah. that was good, but not enough to 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 sustain uh, 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 an allegiance of anticipation of uh, people anticipating your 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 next move. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Your and, next, and people, your next show. And the audience has showed you that at the end of the day, you can't take them. You can't ever take a movie going audience for granted when you charge them what they're being charged. And like. The fact that Super Mario Brothers, shouts to Pablo, he was all over that one from the beginning, Barbie, um, Oppenheimer, that those were the movies that people resonated with the most original stories of all different. You couldn't have three more different movies than that. So don't tell me people don't have like a variety of taste. People will show up for things that are original, well-crafted, well-executed, and that give them a reason to spend their well-earned dollars to sit in a movie theater with their family and friends. And this genre kind of forgot that and has been taking people for granted. So we'll yeah, see. Man. They, you know, we're hopeful Superman Legacy, you know, in combination with Batman Part 2, will get the DC side of the table on track, but there's a TBD there. You know, for Marvel, they're probably going to get a little bit of a false high next year with Deadpool 3. Um, but I think... It's going to be what comes after Fantastic Four and the pivot to the X-Men that will determine whether we still care about this stuff, you know, three, four years from now, or whether we are talking more and more about offshoots of the genre, the Godzilla minus ones, the One Piece, the Blue Eyed Samurai, like the things that are like not true classic Marvel or DC, but they have the spirit of a superhero movie or the spirit of something classic in the genre that we, that we like, that may be what we spend our time doing and that's fine too, but it'd be yeah. a shame if Marvel and DC are not part of that discussion. Oh yeah. It'll be, it'll be. <laughs> and listen, I will be the first one in line to tell them 
what they did wrong if they don't fix it. I'll throw another one for you, Warner Brothers, or whoever, Amazon, whoever. John Hamm and Space Ghost comedy. Another franchise, but the Birdman, all them dudes, you can start off with Space Ghost. John Hamm comedy? <laughs> Forget about it, Brian. Forget about it, Brian. Anyway, um, keep hanging with us um, and, and, and keep tuning in because uh, we love this genre. <clears throat> And we don't want it to go away and we want it to do well. And we are here to offer insights as to how to do that possibly. Because we're no experts. We've never been, we've never hand written no script. We've never directed. I've edited some videos. Yes, I do a lot of that stuff. But we've never been in a full production like of of, of, those, of that magnitude. Although, you know, I want to do Voltron. <laughs> Voltron is my thing. I'm telling you. Voltron <laughs> is, is, I don't understand. But there's a lot of possibilities there, man. Um, Brian, anything else before we sign off for the no, year? I mean, yeah, so they hope everyone has a great close to their 2023 and has a happier and healthier 2024. And that goes for the genre as well. So even though the calendar looks a little tough, we will be here to cover everything for you in the next year. Yeah. Um, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!